section is support and resources and the standard says that the organization shall determine and provide the resources needed for the establishment, implementation, maintenance and continued improvement of the ISMS. The organization shall determine the necessary competence of persons doing work under its control. And that means that you have documented what it is that makes somebody competent to do the tasks. So you might have a job description that says the person has to have X years experience. Competence. The standard says that the organization shall determine the necessary competence of persons doing work under its control that affects its information security performance. It says that it shall ensure that these persons are competent on the basis of appropriate education, training or experience. And it says that where applicable actions to acquire the necessary competence and evaluate the effectiveness of actions taken and return, retain appropriate documented information as evidence of competence. So what that means is that as part of the job title and job description, you may want to describe uh, what it is that makes somebody compliant, uh, competent, uh, determine how uh, that can be measured. You might want to say that somebody has a certain, needs to have a certain number of years experience or expertise. Uh, and in terms of uh, security competence, the easiest way to demonstrate competence is to set a quiz. Uh, so you have to demonstrate competency and the way to demonstrate competency is to run an awareness program, a course, and at the end of the course, run a quiz, and providing the people score more than a certain score, which you set, that proves that they have competence. And all the auditor is looking for is that you have done a quiz. So if you have a course, and it can be the best course in the world, if you do not have a quiz at the end of it, you will not necessarily pass your ISMS and if you have a quiz that asks a very simple question providing the people answer the simple question you'll pass. Next section is awareness so the standard says that persons doing work under the organization's control need to be aware of the information security policy and they need to be aware of their contribution to the effectiveness of the information management system including the benefits of improved information security performance and the implications of not conforming to the requirements. So uh, the um, best way to ensure that people are aware is to issue periodic uh, security bulletins and security documentation to staff so that they are, um, you are assured that they are aware that the policy exists, how they contribute to the effectiveness of the system, including the benefits of improved security, and what happens if they don't conform. So note that the awareness here doesn't say that you need to train people into becoming information security experts. It says that people need to be aware of the policy and they need to be aware of their contribution to the effectiveness of security. So just bear that in mind when you are setting up the awareness and training and when you are measuring competency, that awareness and training. Next section in the standard is the communication and it says that the organisation shall determine the need for internal and external communications relevant to the ISMS. That includes what to communicate, when, with whom, who shall do it and the processes it. That shall be affected. So that could be a um, a, a, a company-wide uh, program of uh, e-learning, posters, face-to-face -face presentations, or it could be a uh, an email once every two months. As long as you define what, when, with whom, who's going to do it, and the process. I just write that up in a very brief process document. Section 7.5 is the documented information 
and the standard is very specific it says that the ISMS must include documented the documentation required by the standard the documented information determined by the organization as being necessary so that's what you decide and then you need to uh, take into account the size of the organization the complexity and the competence so when you create and update documents you need to ensure that you have appropriate identification and description and note that the standard requires that you have a title you have a date you have an author or a reference number um, you, you are not forced to have a reference number you're not forced to have anything more than title date and author you have to ensure that the format is correct and that the media is correct so that it is for instance uh, uh, printed and then there is a review and approval so you need to make sure that the documentation is approved note you don't have to have a, a change history um, you do need to have the date the control of documented information says that documented information required by the ISMS and by the standard must be controlled to ensure it's available and suitable and is protected uh, um, and then it goes on to say that um, you have to address these activities so address distribution access storage control of changes retention and disposition and so the easiest way to do that is to keep the documentation on the corporate intranet uh, or some other system that will record the uh, um, the metadata about the documentation it'll ensure that it's available it'll ensure that access control is in place it'll ensure that um, your versions are controlled and if you wish you can have different copies for different versions or you can have a history if your document management system supports history so if you use Office 365 or Google Docs then uh, you can use the inbuilt version controlling and then retention disp disposition which means that the documentation is deleted when it's no longer required the next section is the operational section and this requires under the first part of section 8 operational planning and control the standard says that the organization shall plan implement and control the processes needed to meet the information security requirements and to implement the actions determined above and the organization shall also implement plans to achieve the objectives the standard says the organization shall keep documented information to the extent necessary to, to have confidence that the processes have been carried out and the organization shall control planned changes and review the consequences of unintended changes taking action to mitigate any adverse effects and it says the organization shall ensure that outsourced processes are determined and controlled and that really means that your IT systems have change control looking at the uh, specifics of, of 8.1 it doesn't refer to IT systems so if you don't have IT systems or your IT systems are outsourced you might argue that it is the control of changes or the changes to the ISMS are controlled and you have a change control for the ISMS which you put forward at your chain uh, the, the ISO uh, management uh, uh, board 8.2 information security risk assessment says that the organization shall perform information security risk assessments at planned intervals or when significant changes are proposed or occur taking into account of the criteria established in 6.12 and of course in the earlier um, risk assessment process you will have already said that your risk assessments will take place when significant changes occur and then that the organization must retain documented information of the results of the information security risk assessments which you will do as part of the ongoing process uh, the operation 8.3 information security risk assessment says that the organization shall implement the information security risk treatment plan and the organization shall retain documented information of the results of the information security risk treatment which we will keep in the management 
folders, uh, Google Drive, Office 365 Drive, SharePoint or whatever the, the tool is. The next section is performance evaluation and the performance evaluation starts with monitoring, measurement, analysis and evaluation and the standard says that the organization shall evaluate the information security performance and the effectiveness of the information security management system. The organization shall decide what needs to be monitored and measured, the methods, when the monitoring shall be performed, who shall monitor, when the results are analyzed and who shall analyze them. So at this point you are required to measure the characteristics of your ISMS. So, for instance, you might choose to measure something concrete, like the number of viruses that have been identified. You might choose to measure the number of incidents that are, are reported. You might decide to measure the number of new starters. You might decide to measure the number of leavers' accounts that have not been suspended by 30 days after leaving. But bear in mind that whatever you choose, you are going to be held accountable for ensuring that you measure at whatever level of periodicity you choose to measure and that you have evidence of that measuring. And one of the things that the ISO auditor will pick you up on is when they think that what you are measuring isn't of sufficient level of granularity to give them confidence that the ISMS is being properly managed. The next section is internal audit and this is a requirement that the organization shall conduct internal audits at planned intervals to provide information on whether the ISMS conforms to its own requirements and the requirements of the standard and that it's effectively maintained. <clears throat> It requires that the organization plan, establish, implement and maintain an audit program, that they define the audit criteria, select auditors and ensure the results of the audits are reported and retain documented information as evidence of the audit program. So doing all of that can be quite a challenge if you don't have an external independent uh, auditor. So the auditor really can't be the uh, the manager. Um, you might argue that the manager can do it and you can prove it's been uh, put in place but typically you need an individual who is not the ISMS manager and you also need somebody who you can prove to the auditor, the external auditor, the ISO auditor, has the relevant competencies in order to audit you. But the actual process of auditing doesn't have to be particularly onerous. All you have to do is get the external auditor or your colleague to look at your ISMS and write down in an audit report, which can be one or two pages, to say that they have looked at the ISMS, they've looked at the policy, they've looked at the statement of applicability, the management document, they've looked at the metrics, the risk treatment log and the other artifacts and found that they are all being managed correctly and they may have well then come up with some non-conformities, particularly if you're able to get the external auditor to go to a local uh, office or site or to audit a facility where they will undoubtedly find things like um, documentation left on the printer that they can uh, report in the audit. And these are all good things to report back to your auditor to show that a minor uh, infraction has been found, documentation was found on the printer, you took the corrective action to remove the printing, the root cause analysis was uh, user awareness and the corrective action, the ultimate corrective action was to put a note above the printer that said don't leave unattended printing on the printer and that closes the loop. The next item is management review and the ISMS requires that top management review the organization's ISMS at planned intervals. Now, that can be whenever you choose. If you try to do it more frequently than once a month, then uh, you will become very unpopular. If you try to do it less frequently than once every year, your auditor will uh, want to understand how you can manage uh, such infrequency. So. Um, Depending upon who is to attend, 
uh, top management may only want to attend once every six months. Your uh, next tier of management who attend the uh, the actual uh, management group might uh, you might meet every every month. So the review uh, agenda is has been specifically um, identified in the standard. So your best course of action is to ensure that your agenda includes all of these items. So make sure that your agenda has the following points. Make sure it has the status of actions from previous reviews, that it includes changes in internal and external issues, feedback on performance and include trends in non-conformities, monitoring and audit, look at the fulfillment of information security objectives, have a section in your agenda on feedback from interested parties, results of risk assessment and opportunities for improvement. Even if for each of those you have nothing to report, include it in your agenda and include it in your minutes. It says that the outputs of the management review shall include decisions related to continued improvement opportunities and any needs for changes. So make sure you have in your meeting minutes a section on decisions. The organisation shall retain documented information as a result of management reviews which means that you have to keep the agendas in your directory. You've then got a, a section 10 which is improvement and the standard says that when a non-conformity occurs the organisation shall react to the non-conformity as applicable, take actions to control it and correct it, deal with the consequences. You need to evaluate the need for an action so that it does not recur. You need to review the non-conformity, determine the causes, determine if similar non-conformities exist, implement any action needed, review the effectiveness of any corrective action and make changes to the ISMS. What that means in practice is you have a spreadsheet. The spreadsheet lists all of the incidents. The incidents has columns that con uh, that align to the action taken to deal with the incident or other nonconformity. Uh, the review, root cause analysis, and a narrative to see if that is systemic. Finally, the final uh, requirement in the standard is continual improvement, and it says simply that the organisation shall continually improve the suitability, adequacy and effectiveness of the information security management system, which basically means that every year when you get audited you have to prove that you have in improved certain aspects. So that is the mandatory part of the information security standard. The next part is Annex A, the control objectives, but very briefly let's go back to the standard, let's look at the table of contents again and let's just review that the standard requires that after the um, terms and definitions that the ISMS documents the context within the organization it documents leadership commitment it documents the planning that you're putting in place to meet the requirements it documents the support that the organization and staff need in order to deliver the ISMS, it looks at the operation of the ISMS, it looks at the evaluation of the ISMS and the reporting internally and finally you deal with improvement and uh, the improvement cycle. So that is the first part of the ISMS and next we will go into the Annex A controls.